Hey guys, my name is Marcus and for the past couple of months I've been working on a motorized camera slider. Now what a motorized camera slider is, it's just basically a platform that you mount your camera to that moves and pans down the track to take some really smooth shots. You can fully adjust it and set where you want to start and where you want to end and how long you want it to take between both shots. So some of the main requirements that my dad really wanted for this camera slider is for it to be easy to transport, assemble and use. He also wanted it to be very versatile so we can set it up any way you want so we can take different shots and at different angles and different heights. Now that we have these requirements in place, let's go ahead and start doing some sketches. Now that we have all the parts drawn up in SolidWorks, I'm going to put them into a slicer to generate some G-code. I'm going to send that G-code over to my 3D printer here and let it print off the first iteration of parts. So I printed off a few parts here and I actually went through a lot of different iterations. I went through different sizes, different thicknesses, and the reason for this is because there's not a good tolerance on the 3D printer. So I can't tell if the gears are going to bind properly, if it's going to be smooth, and how far away I need to space these gears. So I had to make a, little, a lot of different adjustments and get rid of collisions. But finally, I think I have a few parts that are going to work. For this camera slider, I think I'm going to be going with some stepper motors. The reason for this is because they're relatively high torque, which is good for moving heavy cameras. And also, I can very easily control at what degree they turn to, so I can tune in exactly how far the camera rotates and for how long. I looked at the TMC2208 stepper motor drivers, and they look pretty good. I can subdivide each 200 steps per rotation into its own 256 micro steps. This gives me over 50,000 individual steps of precision to finely tune and smoothly move this camera. They're also known for being really quiet, which is good because they don't interfere with the audio recording of the camera. So to control the camera slider, I think I'm going to be going with an Arduino Nano. Now the reason for going with an Arduino Nano is because it's relatively small and has all the pinouts that you could possibly need. So it can make this camera slider really compact and not really take away any features that we want. So in order to let the user configure the camera slider and change the settings, I think I'm going to go with a really simple design that Stuff made here put in his design. It's just a small OLED screen with a tiny rotary encoder knob that can really set up anything you could ever want. Now that we have the prototype circuit working how we want it to, we can solder it together to make it permanent and more reliable. With some help from my friend Mahmood to get these stepper drivers programmed and working how I want, I can finally fully test and debug the code to make it work perfectly and behave how I want. Now that we have the circuit nicely soldered up, all the parts are printed, and the code is working how we want it to, it's time to assemble this and bring it all together. Now that we have the tripod head mounted onto the camera slider, we just go and snap it into place and lock it down and it's on the tripod. So here we have the finished product. We just mounted it to the tripod which is relatively easy to do. This is the platform for the camera slider and it moves back and forth here along this track and it's driven by this belt here that's neatly tucked away in this V-slot aluminum extrusion. This belt is driven by the stepper motor that's all the way over here. Now the reason why we have the stepper motor out on this side is it helps with a little bit of counterbalance because I specifically made this camera to hold the weight of the camera and lenses that my dad is using. Now all the wires that control the stepper motor are neatly tucked inside the profile of the aluminum extrusion so you can't see it. It's nicely tucked away, it's a good fit and finish. Now what's, moving, what's driving the stepper motor here for the pan is the wires that are in this telephone cord. Now I use this telephone cord because as this platform moves back and forth it can stretch and it can become compact without the wires dangling all the way down. So it's a really nice compact system. For this platform here, you have the pan from the gear moving it, but also you have this tripod head here that can help you adjust it. So without the pan even going, I can tune in where I want the camera to start. I can even tilt it up or down. And I can even adjust what angle I want it at. So I can move it all the way to a 90 degree angle. So it's really versatile. I can do all the shots you could possibly imagine. Now to control all this, we have the box here, the control box. And what it has is a little rotary encoder here with an OLED screen. So it's a really simple 
turn and click system. And this OLED screen is, is lit up so you can see it in the daytime, nighttime, a really nice font, it's really visible. So it's a great little compact system here. So now I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to set up and use this camera slider. So first you can select the mode between time-lapse and regular pan and move. So I'm gonna do pan and move. And now I select the position that I want the camera to end at. So I can move it all the way to the left right here. And I can lock it in. Then I can set the uh, angle that it ends at. So I'm gonna pan all the way over here because I want it to end pointing that way. And I lock it in. Now I select the position I want to start at. So I'll bring it all the way over here. There we go. And then I'm gonna select the angle that I want to start at. So I want to go from here and then pan over here. So I'm gonna start it from here. Next I select the speed here. So I can go from zero to 100. Now it's gonna calculate how many degrees it rotates as it moves and now it's gonna execute. And it moves very smoothly and it will end right where we told it to end and at the exact angle that we set. So as you can see guys, it's a really easy system to use to set up and very versatile and it can get you some really smooth shots.